1950 when we had a little tiny television set, you know, and that was one of the first TVs. And um, by now we were supposed to have flying cars. Well, uh, yeah, I'm waiting for those too. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it seems that there's a, a pent up uh, uh, evolution that's coming, almost like a uh, a wave of tech of of, de- of advancing that's. Uh, uh, coincidental with our consciousness that is occurring right now that will completely transform our experience and the planet. Well, only if we bring it in and embody it, because mm-hmm. I think what a lot of spiritual people have forgotten or didn't get in the first place is that the next level of spiritual evolvement is not kissing the face of God. That's mm-hmm. We've been there, done that. Mm-hmm. It's uh, what it's the old saying of what happens when you become enlightened, it's chop wood, carry water. Right, right. That's when the mundane becomes sacred. Yes. And yes. that's how heaven becomes earth. Wow. And we are the channels for that to, by grounding ourselves into Gaia and with Gaia and working with it and bringing these higher energies in, we can help bring heaven to earth. Is is that, uh, am I grasping that? Yes, very, very well. The, okay. the other aspect of that is that the higher consciousness we all feel we're moving towards and we feel we need mm-hmm. requires a higher energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like fossil fuels can't take us any any further into the future now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The yeah. old energy, the old the old school has brought us as far as it can bring us, it, but it can't do the next step for us. And and we're kind of being. It seems that from my uh, perspective, that we're being pressed at the very end of this process, almost uh, squeezed <laughs> to. Uh, uh, to come to this realization with, uh, you know, the atom- nuclear power plants breaking down and polluting the uh, oceans and the oil things and so on and so forth, they're just not sustainable anymore, and neither is the uh, idea of an infinite growth and uh, hoarding of uh, money and power. So it seems that's all breaking down right now. Well, it's a natural evolution. It's very natural for t- children to grow up. Um, <laughs> and if you've noticed, the uh, the billionaires from the first billionaire, uh, the, you know, I think the first billionaire was in his 70s. Bill Gates was one of the youngest billionaires. And now we have um, uh, the guy with Facebook that's the youngest billionaire in history. We're probably going to see a teenage billionaire next. You know? <laughs> but this is important because money is becoming spiritualized. It's green energy. It's beautiful huh. green energy. And I was told uh, by the light that one of the main signs to look for, too, is when we see truly enlightened beings entering into the Fortune 500. Oh, that would be nice. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, that would be wonderful. Well, I'll be watching for that. Yeah, uh, me I'm, too. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath. But <laughs> no, well, it's, it's happening right before our eyes. You yeah, know? yeah, you're right. You're and right. one of the beautiful things about the guy that started Facebook is uh, he invested in the Tesla car company gigantically. Oh, I didn't know that. Bill Gates could start a, a electric car company, which is, you know, electric cars are the fastest thing we can do to improve the environment right now. Yeah. They've been proven they work. People want them. But, you know, uh, Bill Gates, I say, uh, you know, email these people. Bill Gates could afford to start an electric car company. So could the Dalai Lama, who has vast wealth and investments. Oh. So could the Pope, who has vast, um, right, right. vast wealth and investments. Why aren't these Why aren't these groups doing this? Good question. Email Email them. Ask them. Yeah, good. That's very good. Maybe <laughs> they're starting a movement here tonight. <laughs> it's about time for them to loosen up the coffers and, uh, oh. you know, take care of the, of the rest of humanity because we are all interconnected. We are all one. Mm-hmm. And what we do to uh, another person, we're doing to ourselves. And, you know, the beautiful yin-yang of that is is that they could become even more wealthy and do even more great projects. Right, you right. Know, just, you know, it wasn't that long ago that the uh, you know the Catholic Church audits gets audited every once in a while, and they discovered they owned a birth control pill company. Oh. I mean, they don't even know what they were investing in. 
<laughs> they probably don't even know how much they have. <laughs> you know, but yeah. uh, but those you know that's the old way, right? And um, and so everything is totally possible. If you saw the movie uh, Who Killed the Electric Car? Yes, I did. Well, you've got Mel, Mel, Mel Gibson, the movie star, who's a billionaire, crying about they took his electric car away. Well, Mel start electric car company. Well, he also did conspiracy theory too. Yeah, and <laughs> so um, he should be putting his money where his mouth is. <laughs> so, so it's interesting that all this is all this potential is here. Yeah. It's here for the first time. Uh, yeah. It may not have been here a hundred years ago, three hundred years. It certainly wasn't here a thousand years ago, but it's here now, which is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. One of the things that you said, you talked about, uh, and you do talk about in your CDs and on your experience, um, you talk about the higher self matrix and how our higher selves are all, uh, I, I'm, yeah, you'll say it better than I can remember, but that they're, they're encircling of the globe and they're all interconnected. So uh, is it like uh, we're kind of like the uh, puppets down here on Earth that are kind of dancing to the higher selves that are all communicating and we're just saying our lines? Absolutely not. No, no, no way, shape, or form. Oh, okay. All right. um, as it turns out, there's only one higher self for the entire planet. Oh. Every living thing, every rock, every living thing, every leaf on every tree is all the same being. Oh. And so we, that light at the end of the tunnel near Deathers talk about is that higher self matrix that we oh. all go to. Uh-huh. And it's very important, uh, as we go to that light, people have life reviews, but that life review is the only judgment you're ever going to get because it's the most critical judgment. It's self-judgment. And believe me, when you're there, you'll get it. Uh-huh. But the other thing is, as you, as you, every time you've died and reincarnated, as, you, as you've had that life review, you've downloaded your entire experience into that oversoul matrix, and then every one of us that passed through that is even more enlightened by all the experience. So the experience is cumulative and it's this collective consciousness is adding up to something fantastic. Wow. That sounds encouraging. I like that. Um, I, I was also surprised, uh, speaking of this, that um, you actually stopped your near-death experience. You halted it uh, when you were going towards the light and said, wait a minute. Um, so tell us about that. Well, you know, um, I before I before I had my experience until you know, several years afterwards, I had never heard the word near death in my life. I never even heard the word hospice. Till I ended up in one. That's you know. Uh-huh. Pretty thick, and um, it was only uh, when I uh, went to a lecture by uh, Phyllis Atwater, P. M. H. Atwater, the famous writer on the near death subject and research. Mm-hmm. When I saw when I saw her lecture and met her, I said, "I think that happened to me." And we, she and I, have been friends ever since. She introduced me then to Dr. Ken Ring, who studied over ten thousand or more cases, and they were surprised. Of course, I I hadn't met any other near deathers at that time. Mm-hmm. They were they were surprised that. At, at, the, at one point in my in my experience, when I was with the light, I asked the light to stop, and I realized this was an interactive experience, mm. and the light agreed with me. Uh, <laughs> the what we call the death or rebirth experience is just as interactive as the life you're living right now. And as far as they know, I'm the first that did that. But uh, wow. but somebody had to do it sooner or later, you know. Wow, well, yeah, right, <laughs> <laughs> right. Wake up and realize. Well, wait a minute. And and the light was. The light is the most gracious thing in the world, our oversoul matrix, because, um, you know, uh, when I said, hold on a minute here, can we talk about this? The light said, sure, uh, what you got? <laughs> and uh, I, I had a lot of questions, believe me. I, I had a lot of questions to ask. I bet. I, w- I wish we had a recording of that conversation. <laughs> I think we'll probably figure out some sort of technology sooner or later. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, take your webcam with you or something. I don't <laughs> really? <laughs> it's a little uh, cameras. Yeah. Well, so you went also beyond the universe and uh, in, in all, into the void as well. So there are... I remember you talking about the soft booms, which are what, uh, like organic divisions between the universes, or what? Maybe you know, it's like crossing the sound barrier, you know, things like that. But um, you know, I um, once I'd asked all my questions, and and all my questions had been answered to my total understanding. I mean, my questions, not your questions. Right, right. We all have different sort of questions. Um, then I, I, I asked the universe to pull the veil. I wanted to see 
what else was out there, and I went on a fantastic uh, a trip. Seems like it took a second now, but I'll probably didn't need the rest of my life to tell you the whole story. Wow. But I, in that experience, I learned that there, and I was saying this long before scientists were saying it, uh. that I learned there was more than one Big Bang. In fact, uh, the Big Bang is sort of a, a bad word for this. You know, the, 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 the Big Bang word came from the only guy that didn't believe it. He was putting it down, and they used his word. Uh. But there's, there's more than one universe. It's infinite, and there was uh, there's been many what we call big bangs and ongoing, and in fact we're just beginning to maybe even be able to grapple with the uh, the concept of no beginning and no end. Mm, wow! And so, uh, and I checked. Not even God knows where this began, and there's no really? end. It, wow. it's, a, it's this incredible continuum. So, um, uh, so I I and in, in the void. And, and it took me, you know, it took me a long time to assimilate my experience afterwards. But, the, you know, there there are these great voids between things. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, it's 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 interesting because in in every atom, there's a you know there's a nucleus, and then there's or, uh, uh, electrons and things orbiting those atoms. There's more space between the core of that atom and the outer orbit of the uh, electrons per se mm-hmm. than th- th- than from here to Jupiter. And mm-hmm. so uh, you can go into these voids, and the voids are are uh, absolutely uh, devoid of experience. Mm. And uh, and that was interesting. And you know, I, and I, I tell people to this day, I have no words for that because there are no words for it. The yogis, the yogis have tried to explain that to us. You know, yeah. there are no words for some of these things. Oh yeah, some of the Buddhists, I believe, uh, their highest aspiration is to enter the void. Well, it's easy, but it's it's like nothing. You know, you wanna... <laughs> I think it could be kind of boring after a while, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, that's uh, you know. Uh, I heard something that I really like, and uh, uh, it was uh, why is Earth one of the most uh, popular incarnational destinations for you to come to? Have you heard uh, that one? No, no. Why? That's because that you you incarnate here when you need a vacation from eternal bliss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not gonna, you're not going to get it here. You can, you can, you can have all that you want, but you're going to get bored with it. <laughs> yeah, really, no kidding. Oh my goodness. Well, now you also saw many other civilizations, and and lots of my guests talk about um, um, various uh, foundation. What does he call them? Uh, E.T. civilizations. Anyway, my mind seems to be blanking out tonight. I have vast <laughs> gaps in my data banks. But, Are you in the uh, void? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm in the void. <laughs> but um, you also saw other civilizations, and we're surrounded with life, aren't we? I mean, to think that we're just this little globe and we're it is just the, the, is the height of uh, hubris, isn't it? Yes, it really is. And but but what's interesting about all life in the universe, um, which I found fascinating, is that uh, life as we know it, that we can communicate with, is fairly rare. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, just in our galaxy, there may be ten billion of us, ten mm-hmm. billion planets like us. But life in general, there's life way ahead of us, life way below us. But life in general, most of the life in the entire universe is microbial. Mm. By far, just like most of life on Earth is microbial, most of the cells in your body is microbial. So we might look at this microbial intelligence that's at the base of everything and mm-hmm. look at it uh, look at it a little differently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Cleve Baxter could communicate with bacteria, and and uh, you read his work and you can learn to do this. Bacteria are turns out are very intelligent, and if there's if there seven trillion of our ten trillion cells, you know they're they uh, they control our hormones. Uh, we have sweet tooths. There's so much that these microbes and their conscious affects our lives every day. But with our with our primitive understanding of what life is, we think life is us. Period. Right, right. You know, when it's really a lot more, it's more dynamic than that. Yeah. Do you think we'll be we'll learn how to communicate uh, in terms of disease with our bodies and communicate with ourselves and even down to the bacterial level at some point? Well, we've we've been doing this since ancient times. I mm. mean, the shamans have done it. Um, there's great examples of this all around us, everywhere. Cleve Baxter did it scientifically to prove, I guess, that it could be done on that level too. But shamans have known this. Uh, great, uh, great masters have known these things, and uh, and there's great intelligence. And everything you know uh, after um, 
I used to think the world was a really stupid place, but after my near-death experience, I always assume that someone is super intelligent, unless proven otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, one thing that I think uh, I, a lot of people don't uh, understand very clearly is that there is uh, a record. Everything that uh, we do is recorded in a holographic kind of 